start with the um, definition of unity, which is the state of being united or joined as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, its synonyms are harmony, accord, cooperation, collaboration, agreement, consensus, and solidarity. So first I'll start in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, and it'll be 1 through 7. And here in this passage is talking about spiritual gifts and the unity and diversity. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except the Holy Spirit. There are diversity of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are difference of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one of the prophet of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same Spirit work works all these things, distributing each one individually, individually as he wills. And then the next passage is going into the unity and diversity in one body. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Whether Jews, Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, it is therefore not, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, Am I not of the body? Is there, it is therefore not of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them in the body, just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. And our <coughs> presence unpressable parts have greater modesty, but our present parts have no need. But God composed the body having given greater honor to the part which lacks it. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And I'll stop right there. Um, so we can all say in here that we are all filled with the back, um, filled with the Holy Spirit baptized with evidence of speaking in tongues, correct? Amen. Okay, amen. That is the first thing that we have that brings us to unity. That unifies us, the fact that we all have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Now, there are people that make up part of the body that don't have it, but that's okay. And that's where us others come in to make sure that they are able to get it through, th through other things. Now, within this body of GOC, we have many different ministries and auxiliaries. For example, we have the men's ministry, the women's ministry, the youth ministry, the music, the usher board, and Sunday school. 
and the altar workers, just to name a few, and um, <clears throat> what is one without the other? For example, if somebody were to walk through the doors, they're first greeted by someone. Next, the ushers usher them to their seats. Next, then you have the music ministry who ushers in the spirit. After that, then you have somebody who gets up to preach, which prepares their heart for the message, but which also prepares their heart for altar call. Amen. And then once altar call is done, then you can kind of decide where this person is going to go. Most of the time, let's just say the person will stay here in this congregation. Well, then other things are opened up to them. Then you have Sunday school, you have Bible studies, you have other things that are opened up to them that allow them to flourish within this body. Okay, so without those things, then we wouldn't make up a full body. We wouldn't be able to flourish within unity. Okay. Now I go back to 1 Corinthians 12, 15, 20 through 25. And there it was talking about how um, the eye is no better than the foot. And all those things are needed to make up the human body. Now just think about the human body. It's very complex. There's so many different things going on within the human body. You have the synapses in your brain. You have veins that connect and run through every part of your body. You have the brain who sends commands and signals to each part. I wouldn't even be able to sit here and move my hands, fingers, and toes without my brain sending those commands to them. Amen. So if I have a brain, we say that God is our head. He is the brain of the operation. Okay? So there is not one part of the body that's more important than the other. <coughs> The human body itself is very complex, yet it is unified with unparalleled harmony and its um, interrelatedness. It's a unit and cannot be subdivided into several bodies. If the body is divided, the part that is cut off ceases to function and dies, and the rest of the body loses some of its function and effectiveness. The human body is immeasurably more than the sum of its parts. So let's go back to our example of we have somebody who comes into the church for the first time. Imagine if there's nobody to greet them. How do you think that makes them feel like, okay, well, wait a minute. Then they have to find their, uh, their own seat. And then the music is just kind of all over the place and people are just up there to be up there. Or then the message is not grabbing at them the way it should. And then they're not given the opportunity to come to Christ. That's not us functioning where we should be functioning. I'm not saying that that's the case, but we're not functioning. We would not be functioning where we're supposed to be functioning. So then that person is lost all because of an experience of us, this body. Okay? Unity is not just standing within the group that you're in. Like I said, there's many auxiliaries and, and ministries here. <laughs> there's many auxiliaries and ministries here that make up the whole entire body. But it's not just about staying within your own community, within your own smaller body, within your own um, ministry. It's time to branch out into other ministries. It's time to cross-reference. It's time to kind of get into this over here or get into that over there. Unity is also about serving all as well as loving all. How can you say that you'll serve over here in this ministry and you'll love the people over here, but there's somebody over here in this ministry that you don't care for or that you don't particularly want to be around? How are you serving the body how are you serving all ministries then you know we can't you know. operate like that we can't operate within within that it, that that doesn't work because then that causes 
confusion and it causes division as well. So in a sense, you can think of that as one of our triple parts. <laughs> Only within this body, we can't afford for our parts to be crippled and get cut off and die. We need all of our parts. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we have Friday Night Live. We have other things. So what if we cross paths? I know you may think that the youth might not want to see you at a Friday Night Live. <laughs> like, I see the plug. But it's a learning experience for them. That's good. And it's to help them. Because soon they're going to be sitting in your positions. So with the men, I'll use that, the men and the women's ministry, will they not be men? Will the young men not be men when they get older? Mm -hmm. So why not start them off now? Mm -hmm. Even if it's just going in and kind of, you know, talking.